here's how easy it is to add authentication to a Redwood app. I've cloned down github.com slash redwoodjs slash example to do, and I have it running here in my browser. Right now there's no authentication, and anyone can come here and add items to my list. To add authentication to my app, I'm simply going to run yarn redwood generate auth, and then choose from one of our supported auth providers. I could choose Netlify Identity, Auth0, or Magic Links. I'm going to choose Netlify. We'll wait a second for this to run. And then the first thing I'm going to need is a login page. So I'll type yarn redwood generate page login. Now let's look at the code in that file and open it up in the browser. To use authentication, I'm first going to import use auth from at redwood.js auth. This is a simple hook, which I can use by destructuring the return from use auth. From it, I can get is authenticated, the current user, a login function, and a log out function, and several more that I won't use in this demo. Next, I'm going to need a button to log in. So I'll type button on click equals login. Call it login. And I'm going to need a button to log out. So I'll create a log out button, log out. And I want to know whether I'm logged in or logged out. So I can use is authenticated, is authenticated, and logged in as current user dot email. I'd also like to know if I'm logged out. So not is authenticated and logged out. Let's save that page and we can see that I'm logged out. When I click log in, you'll see that I get the Netlify identity pop-up just like that. I've already entered my domain on here to hook it up to my Netlify site. And so I just need to type in my username and password. And you can see that I'm logged in with my email address. If I log out though, and go back to the home page, I can still see my list. So let's make sure that page is secure. I'm going to open up routes.js and use a new component from the router called private. To use it, I'll simply wrap the routes that I want to require authentication. I'll save the page and you can see that there's an error. Now, it would be really nice if I could tell it to redirect to a different page like the login page. And I can do that with unauthenticated and give it the name of the page to redirect to. I'll save the page and now you can see that it redirects me to login. Just to show you again, if I go to the root URL, it redirects me to login. So I'll log in again and go back to the home page. And now because I'm authenticated, I get to see my page again. And that's all it takes to secure the web side. But we still have a little bit of work to do. We need to secure the API side. If I open up our GraphQL Explorer on port 8911, and I run a query for the list of to-do items, I can still see them even though I'm unauthenticated in this view. Let's look at the resolver that handles this query. It's an API source services to-dos to-dos.js. And here's the function, to-dos. Right now, it just makes a Prisma call to return all the to-do items. What we need to do is check for an authenticated user and throw an error if we don't have one. Luckily, Redwood handles the authentication for us and provides a convenience method in source lib auth.js called require auth. All it does is check the context for a current user and throw an authentication error if it doesn't find one. So in our services file, we can simply import require auth from source lib auth. Then we can call it from our to do's function. Require auth and return. Let's save that file and run the query again. Now you'll see that we get an unauthenticated error. To be thorough, we'd want to add the same check to our mutations as well. And if we ever want a more sophisticated authentication check, we can just change this method right here.
And that's it. Full end-to-end -end authentication in a Redwood app in just a couple of minutes.